It's a reasonably well-known fact that there's something of a shortage in automotive grade lithium ion batteries right now. There are several reasons for these shortages. There's a limited number of mines around the world set up to mine the rare earth metals that most modern lithium ion batteries use. There's a shortage of production facilities around the world with the correct equipment and know-how to turn those raw materials into battery cells. There's legal action between rival battery firms over intellectual property. And then there's a huge amount of price gouging as battery suppliers pit customers against one another to see just who will pay the highest price for the finished product. For some automakers like Hyundai, Kia and Audi, this has all resulted in massively restricted battery pack availability, which in turn has impacted on electric vehicle production volumes. In response, each of these automakers I've mentioned, and many more besides, have been forced to push back launch dates or lower production estimates. Others, like GM, appear to have insulated themselves by securing long-term supply contracts before demand reached fever pitch. Many fans of plug-in cars have berated these automakers for not having the foresight to look far ahead and secure battery suppliers or even build their own battery production facilities, as Tesla has done. But now it appears even Tesla isn't going to be immune from the ongoing battery shortage. That's because Panasonic, Tesla's battery partner at Gigafactory One and principal cell supplier to the firm, has sounded the alarm bells over Tesla's production timeline for Model Y, the fourth and final vehicle in Tesla's sexy lineup of plug-ins. Late last week, it issued a warning that its full-year sales, operating income and net income will decline, caused in part by restructuring, higher costs at its automotive businesses and falling sales at its industrial solutions business in China. At the moment, it says, if Tesla pushes ahead with plans to bring Model Y's production next year and nothing changes at Gigafactory 1, it simply won't be able to keep Tesla supplied with cells. That's partly due to Panasonic's current production line limitations, but also due to funding restrictions. Indeed, in the last year, we've seen Panasonic cancel additional investment in Gigafactory 1, suggesting that things aren't at all good in Sparks, Nevada. This comes on top of stories from last month, which allege Panasonic is struggling to keep up with demand at Gigafactory 1, that workers are not following clean room at guidances as strictly as they ought to, and that around half a million battery cells are thrown out per day due to incorrect manufacture, cell contamination and rush production. Well, neither Panasonic nor Tesla have officially responded to these reports, Elon Musk also berated Panasonic on Twitter recently, stating that Panasonic was operating at a pace that was constraining Tesla Model 3 production. Quote, batteries will run out if Tesla starts to sell the Model Y and expands its business next year, Panasonic CEO Kasuhiro Tsuga said last week. What do we do then? It's one of the few topics to discuss with Tesla, including battery production in China. It seems then that the battery supply problems that Tesla has so far managed to insulate itself from are now knocking on its door. Postponing Model Y or constraining production isn't an option for Tesla, as it might be for other automakers, because Tesla only sells plug-in vehicles. So what could happen next? First, I think it's important to note that Tesla has other battery suppliers outside of Panasonic. It's no secret that Tesla is already deep in talks with Chinese battery manufacturers about working alongside them at Gigafactory 3 in Shanghai, China. Earlier this year, it secured a deal with Chinese firm Laishen, a company that until now has focused on supplying lithium ion cells to the consumer electronics world. In the past, Tesla has used battery cells from Samsung, SDI and other manufacturers as well, so there's no reason it wouldn't do so again. Which brings me to the second point. Tesla has, and I assume it always will, been very comfortable with switching out its suppliers and partners if things aren't working out. It did so for the Model X when the original supplier of Falcon Wing door mechanisms couldn't deliver. It's done so with other parts suppliers in the past too. There's no reason to expect it would be any different with Panasonic. 
In fact, if things don't improve at Gigafactory 1, I'm going to expect the two firms to part company within a year with a buyout of Panasonic's Gigafactory 1 stake. Following on from that point, Tesla isn't afraid to throw money at a problem in the short term to ensure production can continue. It's recently secured an additional $2.7 billion from a debt and equity sale, and it stands to net an estimated $2 billion from a partnership with FCA on emissions pooling in Europe. Sales have constantly driven Tesla's balance sheet too, so it's likely it will do whatever it takes to ensure that it can continue increasing its sales figures. Next, we should throw a bone to the idea that Tesla might be about to start making its own battery cells using the IP it purchased when acquiring Maxwell Technologies earlier this year. While Maxwell Technologies is known for supercapacitors, something that could maybe help Tesla when it comes to power delivery or maybe charging speed, it's generally accepted that Tesla's acquisition of Maxwell was more to do with Maxwell's dry electrode technology, which Maxwell has said could enable an energy density in excess of 500 watt hours per kilogram. That's more than twice the energy density of the cells that Tesla's currently using in its vehicles. In the past, when Tesla hasn't found a company that produces whatever it needs or wants, it very often acquires a company that has the knowledge to produce said product and then makes them in-house, which saves money and streamlines the workflow at the same time. It is conceivable that Maxwell Technologies dry electrodes could one day make it possible for Tesla to produce its own battery cells without Panasonic or any other battery supplier's help. Finally, there's the prestige. I know it's a small point, but being involved with Tesla can be quite the honor. Tesla's seen as being cutting edge, so companies are willing to be a little more flexible with Tesla than they may be for other customers. Or rather, they're willing to put up with more issues and setbacks than they might from other customers in order to say that they supply Tesla. TLDR, Model Y may get impacted in the short term with battery supply issues, but then again, Tesla has always managed to miss production goals for initial vehicle launches. And when it does come to supply, I suspect Tesla will do whatever it takes to ensure it continues to have a high supply of battery cells, be it sourcing cells from China, rivals of Panasonic, or making them itself. That's it. Thanks for watching. Let us know if you liked it or didn't like it below. Scribble a comment, hit the notification bell and support us by making a donation through Patreon, sending us some Kofi money or by buying some swag from our swag shop. I'll be back soon with another episode, but until then, keep evolving.